Hello, welcome to another edition of the Pace Report. I'm Brian Pace. As you may know, over the last four years, you guys have been on the musical, spiritual, as well as a literary journey with a lot of the artists and musicians that I've profiled here on the Pace Report. And tonight on the Pace Report is no different. In fact, I'm going to introduce you to a beautiful spirit in the music and the passion of this music. Tonight, singer, songwriter, and record founder of Motema Music, Jana Herz, and tonight is performing selections off her brand new Motema Records release, Passion of a Lonely Heart, featuring jazz bassist Charnette Moffitt at Joe's Pub. And this album took 10 years in the making to record and be released. One, she's been running a successful jazz label, recording and producing and releasing artists like Ronnie Ben-Hur to Randy Weston, Jerry Allen, Amy London, the list goes on and on. Tonight we're going to sit down and talk about this brand new record, which is very rich in her songwriting as well as her exploring and traveling the whole musical gamut on this album. And I'm talking about she performs flamenco, she performs jazz, she also does folk. We sat down and talked about her origins, why she decided to start this record label, and her passion for running Motema Music, as well as talk about the vision of the label. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the sounds of Miss Jana Herzen featuring Charnette Moffat on bass at Joe's Pub here in New York City, here on the Pace Report. From Congratulations on your second release and this is a very personal and also a very you're exploring a lot on this record I can tell you are into flamenco there's jazz there's folk and there's even a little bit of rock why did it take so long to put out this second project <laughs> oh wow that's gonna start with the tough questions here um, Really, the reason this project took took long is that it, there's actually about three or four projects that I was exploring going in different directions with, and I actually got a little bit, because I'm running a record label and have such so much um, clarity about how important it is to be clear about who you are, what your branding is going out, uh, that... I was having trouble both being the artist and being the label. And I did get stuck a little bit in, in going not clear exactly which 
project to, type of project to put out because I really do work in jazz, in rock, and folk sort of world beat music. And uh, there was a question of whether we would do a band record or to do. And I was planning to do a band record actually, but then when Charnette and I were rehearsing. One day I just heard something went, oh, I really like this, just the duo. There's something there with the duo and the voice, just the guitar, the bass, and the voice. And so then we started, we just said, well, let's go in the studio and see what this turns out to be. And we recorded, uh, that day we recorded 16 songs. And then we went in another time and we recorded another. But there's actually 22 that are sitting in the can right now. So it's not entirely just one record because there's actually several records that are coming. I mean, you do, there's six original compositions on this record, and you also do four standards, and two of them that really stick out. The, the first one I want to ask you about is Spain, which was written by Chicoria, and there have been so many groups that have done it. The Manhattan Transfer, Al Jarreau, and then there's the Jana Herzen take on this. Mm -hmm. Why did you decide to do that? Again, uh, in the spirit of exploration, I just thought of it one day and I said, turn it, let's try this. And it's, it's a song. There is a reason, though, why I know how to play that song. Because when I first, I used to be in the theater. It's nice, we're here in Joe's Pub, which is actually Joe, the public theater. And so I, uh, when I left the theater, I actually went traveling. I went to Japan, Bali, and Australia. And I wound up in Melbourne. I met a lot of world beat musicians. It was my first opportunity really to work with world beat musicians and they were also jazz musicians and I hung out with these, there was seven or eight of them had a band called Tingoma and they would get together and shed and I was not a jazz guitar player at the time at all. I just played folk and some bluegrass and so they were shedding on this particular tune and they didn't have a rhythm guitar player that day so I learned the rhythm part. I also, and then they were trying to pick out that do 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 ba do 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 do. It's very, it's it's a great rhythmic figure I, that Chick came up with, and so, um, you know, I could sing it. I couldn't play it at all, but they were having trouble like picking it out, and I was, and I said, well, this is how it's going. <laughs> so then it became a little bit of a badge of honor for me to see if I could actually learn how to play that thing on the guitar. It took me several several years, but eventually I sort of had that. And then when I figured, Turnit must know this, because every jazz musician knows this tune. They, everybody cuts their teeth on that. So, uh, But then we took it at that slow pace, because for me, it's all about the story. You know, when Al Jarreau sings it, he's singing it super fast. And it's really fun music, but I never could even <laughs> quite hear the lyrics. So now when I slow it down, and I go, wow, this is a pretty, like... You know, you're in Spain, it's kind of flamenco, and I, I like it in this slow tempo. It's the passion of a lonely heart To try and catch a star that'll never fall Trouble is it's hard to tell. 
you know this album really goes back to the original troubadour type of singer songwriter late 60s 70s i mean you i'm thinking of jackson brown i'm thinking carol king i'm thinking of james taylor the stuff that you wrote was that a lot of because of the fact that you were influenced by folk music in in coming up absolutely i mean i'm really i'm a folk musician who learned some jazz guitar and loves to sing some jazz scat but my I started off singing Leonard Cohen and Judy Collins and the Weavers and Woody Guthrie and Bob Dylan, all those people. Uh, Leonard Cohen I would be my, if I had to pick one person who most influenced me as a songwriter, I would have to say it's him. He's an amazing poet, you know, and he, he's always telling some rich, deep story that you can't even quite figure out. You can't always know what he's talking about, you know, which I love those songs. They're like the Beatles song... Um, I am the walrus, cuckoo, kachoo. I mean, I like stuff that, that's that song, uh, Soups on Fire, that I sang at the end, which is from my first record. That was just a result of me going, I just feel like writing some song that doesn't make sense, you know. But what's funny is that through the years, you sing these songs, I start to understand, oh my God, that makes a lot of sense. Like when I started to understand what Soups on Fire meant, because I just wrote, this just came out of me. As I started to understand it more and more, there's old thoughts running through my brain, twisted tracks on a runaway train. The older you get, the more you kind of can get what that really is, is talking about. So it's funny for me as a songwriter, I, I'm, I'm, I have to admit I've been a bit chicken about just really getting out. But as a songwriter, the, the songs flow through me and then I'm like, wow, it's amazing what what's being said here. Uh, I... Now, one time I heard Smokey Robinson talking and he said, I don't write songs, I snatch them out of the air. And I do feel that that is what happens. If you just kind of open yourself up, sometimes these things just arrive and you go, wow. Sometimes I wonder if somebody's trying to talk through you or say something to you, like your higher self or something. I know that sounds weird, but I think these things. <laughs> I give equal time to to the writers and producers as well as record label presidents and founders. I did one on Mac Avenue Records and I think it's time that the world really gets to know about Jana Herzen and Motama Music who I've profiled many of your artists on the Pace Report. Tell everybody what Motama is about and Explain the concept because the, these last 10 years you have done a tremendous amount of world, jazz, folk, and rock. And you've really kind of put real music back on the map again. Well, thank you. Appreciate the compliment there. I, I, um, Motema is really, first off, Motema means heart. And it's really just about people who have a very 
it's 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 there to promote people who's who have a kind of burning passion in their music. So I, I am a theater person first. I like to see if somebody's on stage. I like to see them sweating in a way. You know, like something's really happening there, and that and that people are communicating, and there's a conversation happening, and so. As far as what we've done with Motema, I mean, we've worked very hard to do our best to give these artists their due, to respect the music and then find ways to help place them in a certain light so that people are actually seeing them and hearing them and, you know, hopefully record sales result. So certain kinds of music are much easier to sell than other kinds, and we're not picking necessarily what is right there in the middle of the road, you know, Britney Spears or something, we are really working on what I call bread, meat and potatoes music, where it's music that will feed your soul, it might really bring something to your mind, and the, um, you know, mostly though I just, you know, I sign what I like. <laughs> and that's good, because, you know, we, you've had an incredible success and run with Gregory Porter, who Grammy nominated. I mean, his talent is just out there, above and beyond. You've got Amy London, you've got Ronnie Ben-Hur, you have luminaries like Randy Weston as well as Jerry Allen, and also Charnette Moffat, who played with you tonight. What is it about running a label now in these times that you see the importance of now versus when jazz was in its real heyday back 20, 30 years ago? Uh, you know, I'm not sure I'm qualified to answer the question because I wasn't really involved 20 to 30 years ago in really, I, I've not followed my history. I think what, um, for me, what, a, what this label is, anyhow, and I have many artists say, wow, you don't think like the other labels that I'm talking to you. I mean, this is a gathering, for me, it's a gathering of the tribe. It's a gathering of a certain type of musician who really is innovative, courageous, courageous, you know, singing about stuff or playing material that is fiercely individual and, and fiercely communicative. And Gregory Porter definitely falls in both of those. I mean, I was very honored for the opportunity to work, work with Gregory and I didn't, you know, I didn't see Gregory do some kind of showcase or something for me. I saw he played with one, it was him and a guitar player in a cafe, and I heard how incredibly his voice was and, and his presence. It's more his presence. Like, there's a lot of people who have a great voice. I, I'm really only interested in people on the label who have, who understand what presence is. Not just stage presence, but personal presence, to be connected to to understand who they are and maybe we don't understand who we are like it's not the thing for the brain but they they know who they are <laughs> they're walking through the world and you can't shake a person like that off their foundations really because they just are who they are that'll do it again for another dish of the pace report i'm brian pace i'd like to personally congratulate the success of miss Jana herzen's brand new cd passions of a lonely heart on her imprint motema records as well as her commitment and dedication to bringing out and releasing the unique and diverse music that she has on motema for the last 10 years also, I'd like to personally thank Mr. Charnett Moffitt, as well as the staff and management at Joe's Pub for their time and their hospitality. As always, please visit my website, www.thepacereport.com, for my weekly column as well as my past segments. Until next time, remember, if it's in the groove, it'll make you move. Till next time, peace. Peace.